Good morning, everyone. How's everyone getting on? Welcome to the, another episode of the Friday Photo. I'm going to be talking about protein today and um, why it's great. And then I'll also be going through, hi Ariel, why, um, how to make my pots. So yeah, so it'll be fun. Uh, this is my kitchen. It's not always as clean. Things aren't always as colour coordinated, but you know, I'm splashing out for the Friday clothing. <laughs> so anyway, grab a coffee, because I got mine, because it's cold, and you know, coffee's fab. Um, again, I apologise for my little camera doing that weird focus thing. Thought I fixed it, didn't, so this could just be a recurring thing, I'll try and get it done. But yeah, so we'll be chatting, hi. <laughs> um, if you guys have any questions, I do get one or two questions coming in over the questions box, but if you do have any other questions that you want to uh, ask, feel free to throw them in here. Most of the stuff I'll be talking about, I also put up in a blog on my goattheflowcoaching.com website. So that, you can get that up in the, the link in the bio. So don't worry if you're like, whoa, you're saying loads of stuff, I'm not following. Basically, you can just go to the two blogs up there and uh, you'll get you'll get most of the info and the references as well. So yeah, so for those who are watching and then for those who are watching this back later on, what is protein? So you probably have heard me talking about it a lot. Um, it's one of the main macronutrients. So we've got proteins, carbohydrates and fats. And we want to get a mix of those three in most of our meals and also throughout the day, just to kind of make sure that we're getting all the things that we need. And protein, it's made up of this compound called amino acids. So there's 20 amino acids and some of those we produce naturally in our body and then others, there's about nine that are called the essential amino acids. And that they said, that means that we don't, we can't produce them. We have to get them from our food. And then of those nine, there's three that are also called branch chain amino acids, which, you, you know, if anyone kind of played sports or kind of reads any of those kind of body, bodybuilding.com, you'll kind of see BCAAs mentioned. And essentially what they do is they, they're just um, specific to kind of recovery and kind of supporting muscle protein synthesis. So if you're interested, they're called isoleucine, leucine and valine. And again, I have a post about why leucine is important and where you can get that from different foods. But essentially, they're known as the building blocks of our body because they help kind of build our muscles, our bones, lots of our cells. Those are really important for our hormones and our neurotransmitters. Um, so again, you've probably seen me post about tryptophan, which is an essential, or it's amino acid, and it uh, is also essential. And it helps us to produce serotonin. So it can help us improve our move, mood and improve our sleep as well. So, um, you know, again, there's kind of some different goals that people are going to have. People, it's something's going to be relevant to some people, other things might be more relevant to others. But I'll go through them all because they'll probably be relevant to us all at different stages of our life. So the first one is just general health. So protein, as I said, it's really important. It's that building block. So, you know, it supports optimal health through making sure that you've got a good immune system, making sure that you're kind of building new bone and muscle, that you're, you know, recovering from any stresses and strains that you're putting on that body. And again, that you're just kind of eating a, a balanced, a balanced diet as well. And then the other goal that often comes up is body composition. Now, again, one being the kind of main area that I, that I work in, I'm much more about kind of intuitive eating and fueling yourself and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, it is something that people uh, might want to consider. And then, you know, there's obviously the extreme, more extreme end, which is more bodybuilding and stuff like that. But for most of us, if we're trying to think about toning, which is something that kind of comes up common enough, essentially what that is, is body composition. So you, you change it. So you're trying to drop a little bit of body fat and add on a little bit of lean muscle mass. Um, and protein is really important for that. So it does that a couple of num num number of different ways. First one is obviously trying to put on a little bit of muscle mass. You need protein to actually build that muscle and make sure that you're getting what's called muscle protein synthesis. So you'll hear me, you'll hear me say that again. So that's the first thing that we need it for. And then it also helps us reduce our body fat in a number of different ways. So the first, first thing is that um, when we have more muscle mass on our frame, we actually have a higher resting metabolic rate, which means we burn more calories at rest. Um, it also means that we are, um, it's more satisfying. So we actually feel fuller for longer. So again, it can kind of uh, stop us grazing throughout the day if that's something that you kind of feel is, is kind of hindering your muscle protein or your body composition gains. What it also does is it, um, is it avoids us being in a low energy availability state. I'll kind of go into more detail about this in a second, but essentially what can happen is when people want to drop body fat or they want to change their body composition, they kind of go on an extreme diet and they actually drop their calories by a lot. 
and that can put us in what's called a low energy availability state which actually then bumps up our cortisol which then means we actually store more body fat on our midline which is the opposite of you know a lot of people want when they're coming down that body composition uh, route so if you are fueling yourself correctly and you're eating regularly and you're making sure that you're kind of getting protein in and after your training and with your meals that can help avoid that low energy energy availability state while also promoting that lean muscle mass gain and helping to kind of be in that slight calorie deficit which can can help reduce that body fat um hi Tina. so that's one of the other goals we talked about health and we talked about body composition and that kind of leads into the next one which is exercise performance and recovery so i was talking about muscle protein synthesis and how protein is important for that and um, it's also really important for recovery and you guys have heard me talk about this before so it's kind of a couple of different facets of recovery the first one is obviously you know kind of reducing stress and all that kind of stuff and making sure we're getting kind of downtime in between the training sessions but a big and sleep is another huge one but a big part of that is also um our nutrition and what we eat so essentially what happens is when we exercise we put a little bit of stress on our bodies our body then recovers from that stress it goes into what's called an alarm state it recovers a little bit hi lou uh, it recovers a little bit and then it allows us to super compensate which is that getting fitter or getting kind of stronger or leaner or whatever that might be and um, so but if we're not supporting our body through the recovery and again i talked about those different facets we can end up in a state where actually we just end up bumping our cortisol up too much and we're in a kind of chronic state of um of stress and then it kind of leads us going into that exhaustion phase so protein is really important for that again it helps you know repair the damaged muscles and bones and all the kind of stuff that gets under pressure when we train and if you're specifically going for resistance training as well obviously protein is going to be a huge play a huge part in that because what you're looking to do is slightly break down that muscle and then re recover and repair it and grow it bigger and stronger as well and what they kind of showed was you know people often ask like how much protein should i be eaten and there's there's kind of a range so the typical range that they say is 0 0.8 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body uh, body weight so again like 0 0.8 grams could be something like you know 60 grams throughout the day and that's kind of the lower end and you know that's i guess the minimum that we need to kind of be um kind of healthy and functioning and all that kind of stuff but a recent study that came out in 2019 which actually is not recent ago i feel it's like last year just didn't happen but anyway re relatively recent it looked at resistance trained women and the protein needs that they needed throughout the day and then also on training days as well and they found that it was actually higher than maybe people might have expected i guess the kind of assumption was that you know we might have been down close to that lower end of the scale but actually if you're doing any sort of resistance training you um, are looking at that 1.5 to 1.9 grams and basically what does that mean so i tend to and again in fs and then also with my clients through the go with flow coaching we tend to use pan sizes it's not a strict way of measuring food or anything like that it's more like a guideline and a toolbox of how you can kind of eyeball whether you're generally speaking taking off the boxes of what constitutes kind of a, a balanced approach to, to eating and we talk about pans of protein so you want to get a, a serving size is about whatever your pan size is and you're trying to get that and that roughly equals around 20 to 30 grams it obviously depends on what food you're having but generally speaking you're trying to get that so if you're trying to make sure that you're getting enough protein throughout the day you're looking at maybe getting a pan to two pounds of protein with each main meal and then a pan with uh, snacks as well and why it's important to get protein throughout the day is that it helps support that muscle protein synthesis so again you know if you are training in any way shape or form you want to make especially if you're doing any resistance training whether it's at an elite level or you're just doing it for the crack three times a week it doesn't matter um you want to make sure that you're supporting that training and getting enough muscle protein synthesis throughout the day so you're looking to try and get that 30 grams consistently with each meal rather than kind of hitting a few maybe like 20 didn't really have anything with the snacks so it's like you know zero or it might be quite low um, and then we have a big lots of protein for our dinner so we, we it's better off and supports most protein synthesis if we actually space that out throughout the day so i'll be talking a little bit about how i do that later on um but yeah so that's kind of the exercise and recovery and also sorry on the recovery note it's important that we prioritize getting protein in when we are in that second half of our cycle so again i'm a big advocate of tracking your cycle and knowing what's going on with the hormones so that we can kind of empower ourselves to better understand our physiology and how to make sure that we're working with that so that second half of the cycle once we've ovulated we actually start to produce um progesterone hi everyone 
um, and progesterone does lots of wonderful things so you know it's cancer central nervous system it helps us sleep better but it is slightly catabolic specifically in comparison to estrogen and catabolic means that it can kind of break down muscle um, and kind of it, in, in comparison to supporting muscle protein synthesis or uh, being anabolic so catabolic versus anabolic progesterone is slightly catabolic so we just want to make sure that we're promoting our and supporting our um, protein needs and recovery needs as much as we can throughout that second half of the cycle. So yeah, super important there. And then another uh, reason that it's important is for pregnancy as well. And you know, the it's called FIGO Federation, International Federation of um, Obstetricians and Gynecologists, and they recommend that you get an extra kind of 20 to 30 grams of protein when you are pregnant to kind of support uh, growing at least so that's going from like that 60 grams kind of up to, to 80 grams so again it's kind of it's very much still within that range but and for most people who might be on this call they're probably getting sufficient amounts anyway but for some people they might not be and then if you were training while you're pregnant as well obviously you've got that need for protein and then um through the training and then you've got that need for protein through kind of growing a human so um it's definitely beneficial for for lots of different things and then as i mentioned your kind of cycle health so making sure that you're getting it in that second half of your um, menstrual cycle if you aren't pregnant and that you're also getting a good mix of different branch chain amino acids and amino acids in general because again they all serve a different function and some are good for kind of supporting your mood so again I mentioned that tryptophan which can help us produce serotonin which can be useful <laughs> when if maybe we're feeling a bit low and also kind of feeling a bit tired and it helps us sleep better so Kind of you can get that through complex carbohydrates but also from things like turkey and chicken so poultry and stuff like that and i've got a full list of those on uh, my post and then i also have it up in the, the blog post as well um so yeah so then i got a couple of questions about how i get protein throughout the day and i know that's again something that comes up a lot with my clients as well is just not knowing how, how to do it and it can kind of straight away the assumption was i guess like oh i have to have protein shakes and yeah, it's handy. I'm like, I use it on my breakfast. We'll be doing it in the pros now, but you don't have to have it. It's a useful way of getting protein in as a very useful way of getting it in after your training. So again, kind of trying to make sure that you're supporting those training recovery needs and getting that 30 grams of protein in post session. Um, but there's lots of different ways you can do it. So there's, I got to kind of take like a three pronged approach um, to when I'm trying to think about building out protein sources that I might want to have throughout the day. The first one is doubling up on dinners. So say for example, you're making a dinner the night before and you are cooking a beef stir fry. And normally you'd only cook amount, the amount that kind of you and maybe someone in your house might need. And then that's kind of it, you might have like a small bit of leftovers. If you actually double that up and imagine that you're cooking for four or five people or, or even more you will have enough then for the next day for either your dinner or if you want throwing it into a wrap and having that for lunch or even if you only do have a small amount that's a quick grab and go snack as well so doubling up on your di dinners is a really kind of quick and easy way just to make sure that you have that extra bit of protein in the fridge um another way that you can do it is by batch cooking so for example on a Sunday, you could be doing a big pot of chili con carne or spaghetti bolognese or prawn curry or whatever it might be. But while you're cooking that, you could also have a roast chicken or piece of meat just kind of in the oven cooking away that you can then dice up. So you can know you could do turkey breast, you could do pork, and um, you could do lamb, whatever you want. If you're vegetarian, you could cook up a load of tempa or tofu. Um, and then the last one is my grab and goes. So <laughs> again, I am fully embracing the fact that I love food and I love eating and I like eating a good mix of different foods that are kind of, you know, whole foods and minimally processed and all that kind of stuff, but I don't love cooking. I'm actually not a bad cook, but it, it doesn't draw me. <laughs> I'm not someone who will have these uh, kind of stand over the, the kind of hob and cook away, whereas my partner, uh, is much more in that camp and definitely is the person that feeds the two of us in this household. But what I normally do is a lot of grab and go stuff and kind of easy, quick recipes for dinners. And then also just making sure that I have easy stuff to kind of build out wraps and breakfasts and all that kind of stuff so that I can fend for myself. And I'm <laughs> starting to put in a post going, 
called Sinead Fence for Herself and that's me doing my quick <laughs> grab and go lunches or dinners as well and I may or may not turn that into an ebook, The Lazy Lover's Guide to How to Kind of Get Protein in Foods. So anyway, if you're interested in that, let me know and I'll actually put it together. Start off as a joke, but I might actually do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so my grab and goes, I've got a few in here. Uh, so again, I appreciate that I'm an e eater and so I'm talking a lot about stuff that is um, more geared towards either vegetarians and meat eaters, but there, there are some vegan ones that I'll go through. But my, my go-to for me anyway, eggs. So we have a very cool little hard boiled egg cooker that you can set it to and you can just kind of cook like I think six or eight in a go. So it's super handy. We just throw that in, then um, put it into some cold water afterwards and then obviously drain that once the eggs are cooled down and then we just store it in the fridge. And then you can just crack them, throw them into wraps. So if you're having kind of tuna wraps or anything like that, you can just have it as a snack if you want. Uh, I do that a lot, especially while I'm coaching, just kind of grab one from the kitchen with an app or something to kind of keep me going between my clients. Um, and then you can add it into dinners as well. So say for example, you're using that chicken from a leftover roast chicken that you did, and um, you can have a hard boiled egg, and then you can just make a quick miso soup. So like ramen noodles, or sorry, ramen. And um, so ramen noodles, bit of miso, whatever veg you have there in, in the kind of fridge with a hard boiled egg and some leftover chicken. And it's delicious. So yeah, that's one, one of them. Another one that I do a lot, and again, I know there's people out there who are going to be like, oh, you should cook everything from scratch. And yes, ideally, if we all had, you know, unlimited wallets and unlimited time, we'd all be eating organic and we'd all be cooking everything from scratch. But realistically, some people can't afford that and other people just don't have the time to do it nor the inclination to kind of cook that sort of stuff. So if you were like that, which is kind of what I am, <laughs> I use these a lot. Um, and, you know, I do cook my own fish as well. It's quite good and I'll put another recipe up. But things like packaged salmons or like even tinned salmon or tinned tuna, like really handy. And you can just, again, throw them into anything. So in particular, what I use the salmon for, there's a couple of things that I do. For first, I just throw them into wraps. Wraps are kind of like my go-to uh, for lunch and I'll have a little side salad of that. I also, my go-to, <laughs> Craig knows as well, is, you know, the tortellini pastas that you can grab. So grab a pack of tortellini pastas, one of those, well, actually, if I'm cooking for the two of us, I grab two packs because we're both home guys. But anyway, two packs of that, the protein uh, through the salmon, and then I get a little bit of pesto, um, a load of green veg, and I just cook that up and have that really quick, and it's delicious. What I also do is like a green Thai green curry with that as well. So I fry up some veg, could be the frozen veg that I have in the fridge, or any leftovers that we might have. Um, I cut that up then, and then I use some coconut milk and Thai green curry, and you know, use some rice, either kind of cooking from scratch or if I'm in a rush I just use the little packs and that is delicious and then with the tinned tuna which I thought I had in the cupboard but actually which is to my point we actually used it all up in our wraps the last few days <laughs> so I should have bought more yesterday but I, I thought we had more but yeah tinned tin tuna or tinned salmon would kind of mix that up with some vegetables and uh, mayonnaise maybe a bit of kind of skiri yogurt if I want to kind of get it again a bit more of a protein boost um, and herbs and spices, whatever I want, and then I could throw that into a wrap or spread it on some bread. That's always delicious. And yeah, loads more. So you can kind of do like mix and match all of those. You know, you can substitute those for tofu, you can substitute those for uh, beef. Again, you kind of double up on those dinners and we always have something to kind of to go through as well. And then another one for snacks, because I know that's what people get. Obviously the eggs, I love them for snacks. Um, another good one is like hummus with veg or crackers, oat cakes I particularly love. And um, that's a good one for people who are vegetarian or vegan as well. Greek yogurt, delicious. Uh, again, I know if you're trying to avoid having dairy, it can be a little bit difficult, but like Greek yogurt is a fantastic uh, source of protein and lots of good stuff going on there with calcium for your bone health, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then I do use protein powder, which I have hiding here in the back. And I kind of make up like little almost puddings for myself. So I kind of mix them with a little bit, just enough milk so it kind of turns into a paste and then I might like cook some raspberries into it and have it as a little dessert and it's yum. Um, and then yeah, for breakfast, my main one is protes because it's easy and I kind of like something sweet and I love porridge in the morning. So I kind of normally do it winter, cook up a protein, or sorry, cook up, uh, use the protes without the protein in it and I turn that into porridge and then I add the protein afterwards or if I know I don't have much time, um, I kind of make my posts the night before and then I have that in the morning. I also tend to double up a lot, so I'll either have most of my protein or my protes in the morning and then I'll have some leftovers and I'll make up enough in the, my little container here that I actually have enough for a second meal as a snack. Um, so 
and also if you're trying to put on muscle mass you're trying to get stronger and you're trying to you know bulk for want of a better word there's pros are a great way you can like load them up with a load of stuff uh, to get the the old calories in as well and they're they're quite easy and to eat well i find them easy another one then you can do is scrambled eggs or use a hard boiled eggs just kind of mashed onto some some brown bread or whatever you like and uh, have some green set off that it's delicious so yeah that's kind of my go-to of how we do all that i'm trying to convince as i said <laughs> craig to come on and do one of these with me so we'll actually talk through how we we kind of do our meal preps and stuff but tbc if i keep saying it enough hopefully i'll peer pressure me into doing it <laughs> but without further ado and if anyone has any questions on everything i just spoke about there let's let's make our prints um so what i have here this is my like general prints that i tend to make and uh craig's just come in in the background to eat his prints so if you hear him that's him munching away on the prints that he made for himself last night but oats so I just get these in, everything I get is in little pretty much, and I'll kind of go through how much that actually costs, but I have oats here, then that's the basis of it. Then I have some protein milk, you can just use normal milk as well, but I've got the protein milk again for that little bit of a, an extra protein boost. And then, so that's my carbohydrates, then my protein tends to come from my protein powder, or if you don't want to use protein powder, from this Greek yogurt here. Um, <laughs> thanks. And... Then, so sorry, protein, carbs, or protein there, and then kind of trying to get some fats in. So obviously fats are really important for lots of different reasons, for your skin, for your heart, all that good stuff, but it's also really important for your hormones. So, you know, we use fats as our building blocks and proteins as our building blocks for our hormone health. And I'll kind of go through the ones that I have here and why I use them for kind of, I guess, making sure that I keep my hormones happy and healthy, but making sure that you're eating kind of complex carbohydrates, keeping your blood sugars level and kind of fueling yourself, you're gonna go a really long way to, to kind of supporting your um your hormone needs as well. So carbs, proteins, fats then I have linseed, kind of again little do this lovely little mix. It's like linseed, got sunflower seeds, um pumpkin seeds and then goji berries in it and it's delicious. And linseeds, which are also known as flax seeds have been shown to help support progesterone production. And again, big advocate of no period now what, but she's got a great article on her website about that. And she kind of goes into seed cycling and all that kind of stuff and looks at the research into it. But the, the one that's most supported is linseed or flaxseed for progesterone health. So again, as someone who had luteal phase defect and kind of, kind of still do, I kind of skirt with it. Trying to make sure that I'm producing enough progesterone is kind of a priority that I have for myself. So that's why I have that. And then I might also add in some walnuts, really good source of omega 3s. Um, so, again, that's really important for your brain health and heart health, but also can kind of help support like fertility and your hormone reductions and all that kind of stuff. Dark chocolate, because I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, I just love chocolate. I specifically need dark chocolate. Um, so, I just love adding that in. And if you're doing porridge, what you do is you throw it in after you've cooked it and it all melts and it's just absolutely delicious. So, you know, definitely give that a go. And then whatever fruit you want, so you're kind of using them the fruit as a way to get the micronutrients in. Um, so I love raspberries again, but you can use blueberries, you can use whatever you want. These are frozen, because um, again, I think they just kind of melt nicer in the proats. And also, really we don't need to be eating fresh. And also, I'm in Ireland at the minute, so we don't really have any fresh raspberries. So I think it's better to kind of get the, the frozen. I'm a big advocate of just like convenience, and this is why, um, if you don't follow EOD Nutrition, she's actually doing a series at the minute about kind of, I can't remember what it's called, convenience over something. But basically she kind of does recipes out of tinned goods or like frozen goods and stuff like that. So a big outfit again, frozen fruits, uh, tinned fruits. I love tinned peaches with some raspberries cooked into it as well. I sometimes mix them into my, my porridge. And then banana, cause again, it's yum. But you can juice whatever you want. So when I'm making my proats, if I was making porridge, I'd put it in a bowl and cook it in the microwave or in a, in a pot by the time. But anyway, we're making proats, which means I'm going to technically be eating it the next morning, but I'm going to be eating it now <laughs> after this. So I throw the proats in. It's all very simple. You can decide how many proats you use. And again, when we talk about carbs, using that kind of hand guide as a way of, of, of kind of having that toolbox of, uh, of how to build out your meals, you can go one to two cups of cupped hands. I tend to go for two scoops because again I need a lot of calories and I'm hungry a lot of time and I just really like it so I tend to go for at least two scoops on that and then what I do then is I throw in some protein so 
So I can't remember the brand of this. I think it's called So Nutrition. It's like an Irish brand, but it's the way you isolate. So again, my tummy can get a little bit upset sometimes, so I tend to prefer that one. And I like this once it's not super sweet. Uh, so you can kind of play around, look at different brands, find one that you like. But I've got my oats, I've got my scoop of protein. So I think that's got like 26 grams of protein in and around that. Um, so yeah, and then I'll throw in some of my raspberries. Uh, Craig is more of a blueberry person, but I just love raspberries. And I really think raspberries go really well with chocolate. So for me, it's a perfect combo. You can literally throw as much of this stuff in as you want. Um, so that's that. Then what I do is I will add in my fats. I'm gonna need another teaspoon, so excuse me for two seconds. So I go for a tablespoon, heat tablespoon of the linseed mix. Um, so again, why I like this for your hormone health, as I said, linseeds are really good for that progesterone production, but then also this one in particular has sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds. So pumpkin seeds are really good for magnesium and I believe zinc as well, which are also super important for kind of helping your mood and supporting your hormone production. Zinc can kind of be good for, for ovulation. And then selenium as well supports ovulation. Um, both kind of magnesium and zinc as well can kind of help with PMS symptoms and stuff. And then goji berries, again, it's the superfood. It's kind of died off a little bit, but yeah, it's just kind of nice and adds a bit of, bit of texture to it. You can also use cheese seeds, I had this hiding in the back as well, so that's again super high in protein and omega-3 as well. Again, with regards to like the thumbs of protein, that's a way you can kind of measure your thumbs. I like the fats, so I tend to add more to my meals than other people might. Again, if you're trying to be really mindful about kind of cutting and all that kind of stuff and being super lean, which is not what I deal in, then you might want to kind of reduce the, the fats down to one, but I'm kind of an advocate of getting those in there and uh, supporting your hormone health. Obviously they are a little bit more calorie dense, so you need to kind of factor that into your overall day, not that we count calories. So I am not even gonna tell you how many calories are in this because I actually have no idea. Um, because <laughs> it's just not something that I really do. So I have my oats, I've got my protein, I've got my berries, I've got my teaspoon of my linseed slash flaxseed, and then a little bit of chia seeds, and then, I'm going to throw in my banana. Normally I would cut these up in half so they're a little bit smaller, but I'm sure let's just back them in. Also I curse just for, sorry, anyone who doesn't know me. Hi, yeah. Um, so if anyone's offended, I apologise, but that's just a mistake. <laughs> anyway, throw in the, the chocolate then. So again, as I was saying, if you have this in the porridge, what I would do is put all the dry ingredients in without the protein. Um, throw in the berries and then you cook that up and then afterwards I'd mix in the dark chocolate and the protein powder with some kind of extra milk as well. I also add in a little bit of creatine and um, start with you but it's been kind of shown to help if you do any sort of high intensity sports and if you are doing any resistance training it so excuse me resistance training it um, can help with putting up kind of growing lean muscle mass and also increasing strength and power. So I normally throw that in again if I cooked my porridge, I throw that in afterwards. And um, so that's all of that. If you want you can add in the little bit of walnuts for a bit of crunch with the dark chocolate as well. And then this is where the magic shaking happens. So again I don't really measure anything, I'm just gonna go off what I feel. Um I'm gonna channel my Jenna Lawson who we were watching last night was just it's all about enjoying the food and just kind of throwing stuff in. <laughs> and so yeah, I try kind of throw in enough milk that it's kind of a bit wet and then I'll close it and then I'll need a bit more to be honest. And then you literally just shake it, which is why I really like these big ones as well. Um, again, normally what I would do is I'd actually double this up, as I said. So I would have either two portions, two mornings in there, or I'd be using that as one meal before and after. You can throw in a bit of Greek yogurt then if you want to make it a little bit more creamier or if you want to get protein in without having to use protein powder because I know some people don't like the taste and um, so you can throw that in and you can just give it a mix. And literally what I do is I just throw that in the fridge and then when I wake up in the morning I make my coffee which is almost as important as my breakfast. <laughs> so I make my coffee and then I get my coats made that up and then if I'm not hungry or if I don't want to finish it I just put the rest in the fridge and I have that for a little snack later on um, and that's my protes <laughs> so pretty simple nothing fancy um I feel like my headphones just disconnect there so hopefully you can still hear me but yeah that's that's it really it's all very straightforward so if you I hope you guys are making that along with me 
and you can all have a lovely kind of chocolatey fruits. You can go for whatever flavour you like as well. I obviously am a chocolate fiend, so I went for the chocolate protein and the, the pieces of chocolate. But you can go for vanilla, you can go for flavours, you can go just with the yogurt. Um, and yeah, that's that's kind of my post for the day. I see there's a few people joining now, so if anyone does want to ask any other questions, please do. Otherwise, I will let you go and enjoy your coffee and your breakfasts. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Leah. I wasn't sure. I got that little disconnected in my ear and I was like, well, <laughs> don't know what that is, but I'm glad it's not the phone. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks for coming on. I'm actually glad people were up at eight and decided to join my, my morning talk. So <laughs> uh, have a lovely day. If there's no other questions, always feel free to get in contact with me over Instagram as well. Um, and I will help as best as I can. But yeah, I will see you guys later. Have a lovely weekend. Also, don't forget, I put it up on my stories. I'll be doing a little announcement uh, tomorrow as well with Aoife McNeil about something that we've been putting together. So keep your eye, uh, eyes peeled on either my or her Instagram at around 1.45, 2 p.m. tomorrow. I'll have some cool news for you guys. But anyway, see you later. <laughs> Bye.